Hello YouTube, this is Asatsu5, and I thought I'd make kind of an off-topic video um, about Seeker de Mayo. For those of you who uh, pay attention to my channel or follow me on Instagram, you know that I've been celebrating Seeker de Mayo with my brother and my um, Hispanic brother. Um, no blood, just, you know, uh, there was a, uh, there was a, a family-like bond between us. Um, and you see them in my scuba diving in Arkansas videos. Um, but uh, I wanted to make a video about Seeker de Mayo explaining it a little bit. First, I want to talk about um, the name Seeker de Mayo and uh, some of the confusion there might be. Seeker de Mayo literally means in Spanish the 5th of May. And today, if you pay attention to the date and when I posted my celebration photos and videos, is the 2nd of May. And there was a very practical reason why we're celebrating Cinco de Mayo on the 2nd and not the 5th, even though the 5th is the actual holiday. And that is that um, on the weekends, there was more people off walk. So um, there was more people to, able to celebrate. So no one really parties midweek. Uh, you know, it's going to be uh, Saturday uh, of uh, the weekend, um, either before or after, usually before the 5th. So, yes, um, today is the 2nd, not the 5th. It's not the actual holiday. It's just when we celebrate it. Also, um, what is Cinco de Mayo? Well, Cinco de, uh, de Mayo is a celebration of a battle that um, took place in Puebla, Mexico. Um they have a different name than the 5th of May that, that's really big and long, and I can't quite pronounce it, but it's Puebla, Mexico. And really, as far as I know, in Mexico, it's really mostly only celebrated in Puebla. And it's not, uh, it's not a national holiday in Mexico, so it's not like as big of a deal as it is here in America, and I'll talk about that later. But a lot of people confuse um, Cinco de Mayo with... Uh, Mexican Independence Day, which is September the 16th. And as a joke, every uh, Cinco de Mayo, I text uh, my um, Hispanic brother, uh, my dive partner, my friend, and I uh, text them, Happy uh, Mexican Independence Day. I'll walk up to him and say, Hey, uh, Happy Mexican Independence Day. It's a joke. I, he knows that I'm joking. He calls me an a-hole. And it's just, you know, how we all. And uh, But yes, it's not in Mexican Independence Day. It's the um, celebration of a battle of Plebea. And um, the reason why we, uh, we, they celebrate that particular battle is because they were repelling uh, an invasion of uh, the French army. Um, and at the time, the French army was the army of um, the land. It was the top brass, most powerful army that you could fight at the moment. This, keep in mind, this is during uh, 1862. And um, was Napoleon the emperor then? I can't remember. I, I want to say Napoleon was uh, the emperor of France at the moment. Um, as you know, I kind of I like military history. Um, so... Uh, uh, you know, this is somewhat interesting to me. Anyways, it, they won that battle, but I don't think they won the war. But the uh, war, the uh, victory was short-lived. Uh, uh, the Mexicans eventually kicked the French out. But, um, uh, yeah, um, I think the Mexican army was around 4,000, and the um, uh, French army was around 8,000. Keep in mind, the French army was better equipped and the Hispanics or the, I, I guess I shouldn't say Hispanics because it's not all of uh, the Latin America it's literally a Mexican holiday uh, they were not as well equipped um, at that time which um, is interesting because um, uh, during um, Texas independence um, the Mexican army was a very good army uh, a very strong army um, but at this particular point, the French were stronger than the Mexicans, at least up till this battle. And, um, let's see if there's any details I forgot. Um, 
let's see. But France at the time was ruled by Napoleon the Third. So yeah, I was right. Who decided to use the opportunity to establish a Latin empire in Mexico that favored uh, uh, French interest, um, uh, the Second Mexican Empire. I'm not reading this. I'm not going to read you the whole thing verbatim, but I was just checking to make sure that uh, I got my details right. But yes, um, um, uh, this battle is very significant. One, the Mexicans were outnumbered. Two, the Mexicans were out-equipped or outgunned. And three, this was the last time a um, um, European um, country has invaded um, um, North America. So, um, anyways, th that's the historical side of it. Now let's talk about the social... social uh, can't speak... The sociological uh, significance of Cinco de Mayo. Uh, I describe Cinco de Mayo to be very, very similar to St. Patrick's Day here in America. Um, they're celebrated for two different reasons. One's a battle and one's the conversion of the um, Irish. Um, but they, they serve very much the same purpose. Um, when we have immigrants into America, they naturally want to... Um, uh, find, um, I don't know how to say this, uh, they want to find something that's familiar to them. They want to group up with the same ethnic group that have the same customs and same um, values and stuff. It's not a racial thing. It's not out of hate or um, anger or anything. Um, let me put it like this. If you were to walk in a room full of people and uh, obviously, if you're watching my channel, you like knives, you like camping and stuff, and you see a bunch of people with um, um, tie-dye shorts and maybe a Barack Obama chain short, and then you see a guy over here with an NRA short or an REI short or something, you're, you're naturally going go to go to that guy, and you know you have something in common. And that's the very much the reason why Secret of My Own St. Patrick's Day uh, got so big here in America because when the immigrants came, they wanted something familial, and so they started uh, grouping up with um, people of the same ethnicity. And um, like I said, in Mexico, Cinco de Mayo isn't as big of a th thing as it is here in uh, America. Uh, um, basically, the Mexicans found other Mexicans or uh, I'm going to call them Mexican-Americans because uh, a lot of them are born in America. So they are Americans. And uh, they found out, uh, they saw these uh, uh, group of people uh, celebrating and partying and having fun. And like, hey, what are you doing? Oh, I'm celebrating Cinco de Mayo. So it became an ethnic tradition. And then next thing you know, um, as with uh, uh, St. Patrick's Day and um, same with um, – um, Cinco de Mayo, um, the, um, I guess you could say whitey, although Irish or white, but, um, non people of not from that ethnic group started seeing these people having fun celebrating like, Hey, I want to celebrate. I want to have fun. So they started joining in on the festivities. So, uh, uh, that's why, um, uh, on St. Patrick's day, uh, you will have hundreds of people wearing a four-leaf clover short or a kiss me I'm Irish short and over half of them are not Irish um, um, it's obvious from the way they look you'll have a um, African American or a black person with a kiss me I'm Irish short and who knows he might actually be from Ireland but you know that's not his ethnicity um, same thing with Cinco de Mayo um, um, you see a bunch of people having fun. You think to yourself, I want to have fun. So um, you go and celebrate with them. And it's a really cool thing. And um, at Cinco de Mayo, every year they have amateur boxing matches. Now these boxing matches are sanctioned under USA Boxing. Uh, they're legitimate boxing matches. The records were kept and everything. But obviously the uh, 
people who are boxing or not getting paid. It's, um, you know, but it's a real tournament. And, um, you know, we have kids, weight class from um, 40 pounds, uh, maybe even less than 30 pounds. Uh, um, we had some really small kids boxing all the way up to maybe uh, 150. And um, uh, I enjoy watching the boxing matches. I'm probably not going to be able to catch the Mayweather Pacquiao fight because Buffalo Wild Wings is not showing it. So, um I'm a little disappointed in that. But yeah, uh, it's a good time to celebrate. I don't drink beer, so I can't enjoy Mexican beer. Like, it's a good excuse for white people to enjoy Mexican beer. It's like, that's like the main attraction to a lot of people. <laughs> but um, I, I get the Mexican Cokes. I don't know if you're familiar, but uh, that, there was a, um, there was, um, it's Coke, but it's manufactured in Mexico and they don't use high fructose corn syrup. Comes in a big bottle. It's a big long neck bottle, bigger than your average gla uh, eight ounce glass Coke bottle. Uh, I can't remember how many. It's like three hundred something milliliters. But um, I, I had a couple of those. I had um, shaved ice. It was a lot of fun, and I just wanted to explain Cinco de Mayo uh, to all of you. And uh, if you don't have a, a Mexican population in your state, um, you know you might not hear about Cinco de Mayo. So. Um, you know, it's just a cool thing, you know, get to uh, hang out, um, you know, um, um, it's cool. So that's it. Uh, hope y'all have a great day. I'm a Saucy 5 and I'm out.